Welcome back everyone to the Python tutorial seminar series. Today, Michaela Sizemore will be covering Carter Pi and I'll hand it over to her in a second. But before we begin, I need to review our code of conduct. So as in all the previous sessions of, the of this tutorial seminar series, by joining this Zoom call and participating, uh, you've agreed to adopt these core values and engage in respectful communication. Any inappropriate behavior will have you removed from the call. The seminar is only one hour, so we cannot stop it for individualized attention, but some of the co-hosts will be available in the chat, as well as your fellow Python learners. If you have uh, debilitating technical issues, we will get you up to speed uh, after the fact so that you'll be able to follow along with future sessions. And here are some learning resources I would like to direct you to. We have the Python and CarterPy documentation as well as Stack Overflow, the GeoCAD examples gallery, which has a lot of great plotting examples and tools. And uh, today's content is on Michaela's uh, GitHub repository and I will post the link to that in the chat. Uh, now I will pass it on uh, to let uh, Michaela take it away. Alrighty. So yeah, my name is Michaela. Um, I am a member of the GeoCAT team here at NCAR. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you all and we can go ahead and get things started. Alrighty. So you should all be able to see my blue terminal window right now. Um, to get things started, I would like to just make sure that everyone is up to speed. We all have the same things. So the first thing um, that you should be doing is just a git clone. Oops, sorry, I did not click on that. A <laughs> git clone. And then, um, Julia, did you send the um, link to the GitHub in the chat yet, or? I just did. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. So yeah, you'll do a Git clone with that link that Julia just put into the chat. Um, uh, Michaela, before you go on, can you make your terminal larger? So people yeah, can see for on? sure. Uh, oh, need to actually, oh, there we go. All right, is uh, that? Even a little bigger would be better. Definitely. Is that good? Yeah, thank you. Okay, <laughs> definitely. Alrighty, so I already have the repository um, on my local, so I'm not going to run that full um, git clone command. But once you are done with that, you will be able to do, um, actually I'll show you guys this from the beginning. You will be going from your base, um, sorry, your local directory. So mine right now, I am in users slash MISI 1684. Um, you can do ls and you should be able to see, where is my cursor? There we go. You should be able to see the Cartopy tutorial as a directory. So we're going to go ahead and cd into that and just tab complete, hit enter, and you'll now have all of these in front of you. Um, if you don't, let us know because we'll need to make sure that you're getting the right repository. Um, and from there, we're going to go ahead and do a conda and create. Uh, create f and then conda environment.yml. I already have the conda environment installed, so I'm not going to hit enter. But when you do have this ready, go ahead and hit um, enter, and it should go and make that conda environment for you. Um, while I'm waiting for everyone to get up to speed on that, I am going to just kind of run over what we plan on doing today here with our tutorial. Um, so the first thing, or what we're really doing is just looking at the Cardify package. Um, we're gonna go over a couple of different features with inside of it, um, which will be the map masking, map projections, um, the different types of projections that you can do with those maps, um, coordinate reference systems, and then just a couple of different applications with geospatial data. Um, and then, sorry, I cannot see the chat window. So I'm not sure if people are saying anything. Hold on one second, there we go. Um, there we go, now I have that for me. So while I'm just waiting for everyone to get up to speed, if you already have the CarterPy, or sorry, the tutorial um, Conda environment installed, you can go ahead and just drop a Y or done into the chat so that way I know where everyone's at. Um, and then until I see the majority of you all saying that, I'm gonna just keep kind of rambling about what we're doing today. Um, so, sorry, I just saw something pop up very quickly that said a little bit larger on that Jupiter lab. Um, let me see if I can get this to be a little bit bigger. 
actually, I'm just gonna do this. All right, is that a little bit better for everyone to see for that Jupyter Lab window? Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, and it looks like everyone is kind of saying that they're done with installing our Conda environment. So let's go ahead and I will just get you to your guys' next step. And the next step that you will need to do is just a Conda activate, activate um, Cardify by underscore tutorial. And when you do that, um, I'll actually do this step with you all. That will go ahead and take you from your base environment, which you should be already. And then it will go ahead and put you into your Cardify tutorial environment. Um, from that point, we're gonna just go ahead and go to Jupyter Lab, and then that should launch, oops. Which I already have that running. So we'll see what happens with that. There we go. All right, perfect. And I'm actually just gonna hop over to this one just because I know that it's the right size for everyone. All right, so is anybody not to this step yet before I kind of start getting into the coding? Go ahead and let us know in the chat. And then if so, I can pause for a minute, but if not, I will go ahead and get started. All right. Oh. Okay. All right, so I do see a couple of people saying that they're not yet ready. So just while we're waiting for them, um, I was just gonna run over the packages that we're gonna be using today, just because um, a couple of them you might not be familiar with or you know haven't even seen in the tutorial series yet. Um, so first and foremost, we kind of just have our regular base packages here. We have NumPy, Matplotlib, Xarray, and then obviously Cardify. Um, and those are just you know normal Python packages that you, you will probably be using if you haven't already. Um, and then right here, I just wanted to point out some GeoCat specific packages. The first one is this one, the geocat.viz, and then we're importing util. Um, so that is just a couple of convenience functions that the GeoCat team has made for plotting purposes. Um, we really only use one uh, function from this and it's just to help with um, plotting uh, a data set that has just missing data at the prime meridian. So it just fills in some stuff there. And then this next one here is actually kind of a cool one. Um, it accesses a whole repository of data files off of our GitHub. And so this way you don't have to actually download any of those data files to your local machine. And instead we can just call them right here. And so we also don't have to worry about um, where you're getting those or where you're storing those data sets or anything like that. Um, so let's see. Is anybody still stuck on what they have? Sorry, I'm just kind of checking back in with the chat. I see making the web a little bit bigger. Yeah, let me go ahead and do that for you. Hopefully, yeah, let me see if I can actually just minimize this a little bit. Nope, maybe not. All right, is that a little bit better? Yeah, okay, perfect. <laughs> um, all righty, and I think it looks like everyone's kind of up to speed. We've all gotten to the Jupyter Lab spot, correct? Okay. Um, and so if you are at that point that we are using Jupyter Lab, um, go ahead and just on the left side, you should be able to see um, this little Cardify tutorial, just double click it and it will open up this um, Pi, IPy notebook for you. Um, and you will be able to see the same thing that I have here in front of me, or at least on the screen in front of me. And so if everyone is ready for the next step, I'm gonna go ahead and just start making our first um, basic map projection using Cardify. Um, so let me grab something real quick, perfect. Alrighty, so the first thing that we are gonna do, um, and this is really gonna be following us through the entire scope of this tutorial, is just starting with a figure object. Um, you can choose a different figure size, that's up to you, but you can just kind of leave those alone, don't worry about them too much. Um, but after that, we are gonna go ahead and create an axis object and put the basic, I'm going to mispronounce this throughout this entire tutorial, so I'm very sorry, but it is called plate carré. Um, I've been mispronouncing it for about three years and I found out yesterday that I was doing that incorrectly. So I'm still learning that pronunciation. But first things we're gonna type is just ax equals plt dot axes, so axes and then open a parentheses and type in projection equals ccrs 
dot P L A T E C A R R E E. And then we're going to put two little closing or parentheses right there and then close it off right there. And I actually just realized I missed a very important step here. We need to actually run this first code block. So just go ahead and press play when you get into this. And that way it'll import all of our packages and also bring in all of these data sets for us. If you did not run that, we would be having problems once we start running things down here. Um, the next thing we're do, going to do, we're going to skip over this for the time being, but we're going to go ahead and add some um, features to our projection um, using cartify.feature. Um, in order to do that, we're first going to call our axes um, object and do ax dot add underscore feature and then open some parentheses and we are going to type c feature um, dot the first thing I want to add to this projection is land and so to do that I'm going to type land in all caps then go ahead and put in a comma there we're going to give it some arguments um, so that way we can kind of customize what our land feature is going to look like the first one I'm going to add is edge color and I'm going to set that to orange. You can choose a different color, that's up to you. Um, but for the, uh, the sake of example and making it easy to see, we're gonna, I'm gonna just stick to orange. The next thing I want to add is a face color. And the face color is very, oops, misspelled that. The face color is very similar to edge color. Um, it is just defining what our land feature is gonna look like. However, the face color differs because it is pretty much just filling in all of the land feature with this color, whereas the edge color is just getting the outside of that land feature. So for this one, I'm going to go ahead and set my land or my face color to gray. And then I'm also going to define a sorter argument on there. And that's just to make sure that this is plotted in the correct order and that nothing is um, going to be getting in the way. Um, we'll talk about this a little bit more later on in this tutorial, but for right now, just go ahead and put in that sorter argument. Uh, the next feature that I would like to add is going to be our a lake feature. So we're going to do the same thing we did before, ax dot add underscore feature, and then c feature. Um, and this time we're going to do all caps lakes with an s comma, and then we're, we're going to define another edge color. Uh, this time I'm going to just make the edge color black, um, and that's just Again, a personal preference. It's a little bit sharper in my opinion than you know even the orange one, but for the sake of this, we don't really mind that because we already have our orange edge color from before. So then from there, I would also like to define our line width. Um, this is an argument that will basically only cover um, or will be involved with the edge color. And this is basically telling um, edge color how thick do we want the line that is outlining our lakes to be. My default is 0 0.2. Um, you can pretty much play with any number you want in there. Um, the higher the number, the thicker the line width, the lower the number, the thinner it is. And then finally, I'm going to go ahead and add in a face color as well. And we're going to set this one to being blue because water is blue, so why not? And then we are done with that one. And our final feature for this is going to be um, the ocean feature. And this one is kind of a little bit different. Uh, not really, <laughs> but it is instead of how we see in lakes where it's plural, we're only going to type in ocean. I know that we have multiple oceans, but for some reason they just lump them all as one. And then for this one, I'm actually not going to specify any um, arguments with it, um, just so that we can kind of see what the default um, color is for uh, this land feature. And the same thing would apply if I took out all of these arguments up here, it would just default um, colors and line widths and all of that fun stuff. So just to get those ones on the map, we're gonna go ahead and hit play on that. And then double check that everything that we specified is showing up here. So with our land feature, we see that it's outlined in orange. So that's our edge color. We have a gray face color. And then um, for our lakes feature, we see it's here, it's blue. If we zoomed in a little bit, we would also be able to see that there's a black edge color on there. Um, and then the face color of our lakes is blue. And then finally, we have our oceans. And then this is just the default for that ocean feature is this kind of grayish blue color. Um, so the next thing that we are going to add to this, it's going to be kind of a long one. So bear with me, is a border line over all of the countries on this map. So just as we had before, we have ax dot add underscore feature and c feature again. But this time we are using natural with a capital N. Earth with capital E 
and then future with a capital F. And we're going to open some parentheses. And the first thing that it's going to ask us is for a category. And the reason why is that natural earth feature is actually um, kind of just like an online data source. And so this is basically a preloaded version of some of their um, data sources, but it's already in Cartify. So Cartify is able to access them. So when it asks us for a category, we're going to put in cultural. And that is because borderlines are cultural. They aren't a physical feature, um, which you would be using if you wanted to add, for example, like a river system or um, just kind of more in depth features that we have that are physically a part of the earth. Like I said, we are just putting in borderlines, so it is cultural. Um, the next thing is we're going to define the name of the data set that we would like to be putting on here. And in this case, it is admin underscore zero underscore countries. If I spelled that right, yep. And then our next one is scale. And this is just telling um, Cartify and Natural Earth Feature what resolution that we want our borderlines to be coming in. So the most refined one is 10M, and the M stands for millions of units. Um, and that is the most refined version. The next argument that we have in here is going to be face color. And we are actually going to say none for this one because we don't want any of those border lines to be filled in. Um, we want to keep them just kind of as an on top layer and still be able to see our gray um, land feature underneath. And then we are going to add an edge color. Um, and this one, I'm going to keep it as black as well, um, like we had from the lakes. And then finally, we are going to give it a line width. And as I did before, just another 0 0.2 on that. Um, and so once you have that ready, go ahead and hit play. And it should load here in a second. Oh, let's see what I misspelled. Maybe. There we go. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, did this before. <laughs> you do not put a um, quote mark, sorry, on the line width on here. That was my mistake. But as we can now see, we have our countries of the world outlined in black. So that is good. <laughs> the next thing we're going to go ahead and do is draw some grid lines. Um, grid lines are just basically putting our latitude and longitude lines onto this map. Um, so what we're going to go ahead and do is define a variable called GL and set that equal to ax.gridlines. Um, open some parentheses and type in CRS, which stands for coordinate reference system. And that is going to equal CCRS dot um, plate. Gray. And some little um, parentheses at the end of that, comma. And then we are going to give it a couple of arguments. The first one is going to be our line width. Um, these ones are going to be a little bit thicker. I'm going to set them to a line width of one. And then give them the same color though, um, uh, black. And then, oops, the other argument that we're going to put in here is alpha. Oops, uh, there we go. And that one is just going to be 0 0.5. Um, so let's go ahead and hit play. And as you can see, we have our grid lines over here. And they are just in default locations right now. Um, but we are going to go ahead and actually manipulate those a little bit and kind of set our own spacing. So the first thing we're gonna do in order to do that is call that GL variable and put a dot and say Y locator, locator, yep. And then equals M ticker uh, dot fixed with a capital F, locator with a capital L, locator, there we go. And then open some parentheses and put NP dot A range parentheses and for these ones, we're gonna just go ahead and say, you know, all the way from negative 90, so that would be um, 90 south, all the way up to 90 or positive 90, which is 90 north. And then we want them to go in increments of 20 degrees latitude between each one. And then the next one we're gonna go ahead and put on is gl.x locator. And same as before, um, m ticker dot fixed locator open our parentheses and do mp.a range. And this time we are going to go from negative 180 degrees. So that is um, 180 degrees east and, or sorry, west. <laughs> yeah. And then go to 180 degrees 
east. And again, we're going to do this in 20 degree intervals. We'll close off our parentheses and go ahead and hit play. And now we see that there are more grid lines than we had before. So they're at um, more of a, or a shorter interval. So we have more of them. And then we can also see that they are, you know, obviously all over the entire world. Um, so we're going to actually hop back just a couple of steps here and go to a different map projection, just so that way you guys can kind of see um, some different ones. This is not the best way to put these in here. Or actually, we're going to do this different. Um, we're going to just go ahead and delete out this part here, the plate car A from our AX um, variable. And instead, we are going to first put in um, capital O orthographic, O graphic, and then give it some parentheses at the end, make sure that everything matches up, go ahead and hit play again, and then wait for everything to process, which might take a second. Perfect. And now you'll see we have a completely different um, projection here. This is the orthographic projection. It is technically circular, but it's a, you know, a sphere, obviously, overall. And then um, just another one that we can test out real quick um, that some of you might be using or be very familiar with is just the Lambert conformal projection. Again, finish it off with a couple of parentheses and make sure everything lines up. Go ahead and hit play on that one. And then wait until it buffers through. <laughs> there we go. And then you can see that this is um, the Carter Pi version of a Lambert conformal projection. Um, so now that we've seen a couple of different projections and seen some of the things that we can add on to our Carter Pi projections, we're going to go ahead and move on to um, our first kind of fun thing to learn, which is going to just be changing the resolution of projection features. Um, so the first things first is we are actually going to bring in some data here. Um, don't worry about changing anything here. Um, these are already just kind of preset, so they aren't really um, too much to uh, play around with right now. But we are going to go ahead and then add in, where are we at? Okay, so we are going to go ahead and add in our coastlines here. And the way to do that is we're going to do ax.coastlines. And then for this, we are going to define um, just 10m. So as I said, you know, in that previous call or previous box, 10m is going to be the finest resolution that we have on our um, projection list when we are able to define those resolutions. And then the next thing that we are going to add in is ax.add underscore feature. And just like we kind of had before, we're going to do a land feature, but it's a little bit different. Um, it's going to be add or c feature dot land, oops, all capital on that land, um, dot with scale, um, sorry, with underscore scale. And then go ahead and give that the same scale here as 10m. And then we can add in a couple of keyword arguments there. And I'm going to go ahead and set a face color um, of gray, just so that way it's a little bit easier. Oops, sorry, those needs to be in quotes. A face color of gray, just so that way we can see it a little bit easier. And I'm going to go ahead and press play just to make sure that everything comes through first before we go ahead and talk about what we have here. Perfect. All righty. So as you can see, we went ahead and we have our face color here and we have our coastlines defined here. Um, and then on top of this projection, you will also notice that I have a color bar added. This one is not technically part of our Cartify tutorial. I believe we should have covered this one um, in matplotlib if we haven't already. Um, but we're going to go ahead and jump back for a couple of seconds before we get into what our 10 Ms are doing here. So the first thing that I want to point out is this transform argument. Uh, you might have noticed that we have a projection argument up here when we do our axes. What the heck is you know, a transform argument? What's, what does that mean? So basically what happens, or the difference between them, is that projection is only telling um, Python what we want to see. You know? So it's only telling it we want to see a plate car um, projection. That's it. Um, we can also you know, obviously change that and put in our projection to be Lambert conformal or an orthographic, um, things like that. However, when we come down here to transform, 
it is instead telling CartaPy and Python um, what our coordinate reference system is. And so because we are doing latitude and longitudinal data, our projection is actually going to be the same as what we have up here, and it is going to be the play car again. Um, if you don't define that, it ends up confusing Python a lot. Um, it can end up seeing your latitude and longitude data as in meters instead of in latitude and longitude degrees. Um, and it just kind of messes things up for how the projection will look. So you always want to make sure that you are adding your transform argument um, and that it is the accurate one for what you are doing. Um, and if you would like a little bit more um, information on that, I did link to the actual article on the CartaPy website. They have a, a couple more um, examples and how you can use that in different um, references. And then the next thing here, you'll see our C map, which is just our color map um, and mine is set to magma. And my comment here obviously says using the best practices for choosing a color map, um, color scheme. And the thing that I would really like to point out is um, it's obviously the best practices part of this, but um, we do have a tendency sometimes to choose things like, um, here we go, just underscore rainbow. And I'll go ahead and show you what this looks like before I get into it. And a lot of people love having rainbow color maps. You know, some think it's more intuitive than others um, or other map options. However, these projections are actually um, not the best. And the reason why is for a couple of different reasons. The first one being for individuals that are impacted by colorblindness, this blue green section here and even um, the green reds, when they do combine it, in, um, individuals that are impacted by colorblindness might not be able to tell the difference here. So they are losing out on some of the data that is projected onto our map here. And in my opinion, um, as scientists, it is kind of our job to make sure that our science is accessible to as many people as possible. So with that being said, um, you wanna be choosing color maps like Magma is what, and this is one that I really enjoy, um, but there are a couple other different ones that you can choose that are going to have highly contrasting colors um, that are also not kind of falling into that red, green or blue, green color scheme. Um, and if they are, which you will see an example of later, like Veritas, um, you want to make sure that the colors are, again, highly contrasting. So obviously this yellow is way lighter than this um, black color. And so you will be able to tell those differences even if they were, um, you know, kind of blending into each other just based on contrast. With that being said as well, if I were to be printing a color map like this out um, and I only have black and white options available to me, this still would have, or this color map projection would have a higher opportunity for people to be able to see what's going on here. So we'd still be able to kind of match up what our colors mean. Um, and so that's just another thing to kind of take into consideration uh, when you're choosing your color map. And again, if you'd like some more information on that, the GeoCAD examples gallery does have three different examples um, that you can go through that will show you the, kind of the differences between each type of color map option and then why you should choose, you know, the options that we say is the best practice. So now that we've gotten that out of the way, we're going to go ahead and head back over here to our 10M uh, scales. And so we can see here that our coastlines are very well defined. Um, they are matching up really well with um, our land feature, and it looks pretty good. Um, we also see obviously some white space here. That's just the data set um, where it doesn't line up with our land, um, land feature. There we go. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do actually is go ahead and change this over to the next um, less next less refined version, which is going to be 50M. So this is our middle scale. Um, and so when this loads, you will go ahead and see that um, it's a little bit less refined now. We are starting to kind of get things that are just general shapes, you know, a little bit, you know, everything here is rounded. This is starting to flatten out instead of having ridges and uh, troughs. Um, and again, we are seeing some kind of weird overlap with our data, um, with like the white space and everything like that. And then we're going to head in and I'm going to show you our least refined scale, which is 110. Um, and from here, you can see yep, it's, it's kind of just like a general idea of what the coastline, that's what this black line is, what the coastline should be like, and then kind of the general idea again of what the land should be like. We're seeing way more overlap here um, and uh, kind of up here, and then we're missing whole chunks of data right here. So yeah, it's just a 
a lot less refined than we had with our 10M. Then with that being said, I am gonna go ahead and show you what it looks like when we have conflicting um, scales. So this is not a best practice and you should uh, try your best to make sure that you have your scales being at the same um, level. And so we're gonna do a 10 and 110, just so you can see what that looks like. So obviously with the 10M coastline, it's very well drawn and it looks good, but then we have our 110 landmass and it's not the best. Um, and you can kind of see that these are not really compare or not um, compatible with how they're drawn out. So this is why you wanna make sure that you're making sure your scales are the same. Um, and that way it just, it looks better when you're doing your presentation for that. Alrighty, and so we're going to go ahead and move on into zooming into specific areas on a map projection. So again, we go ahead and read in our data set and then, oops, sorry, that is left over from my testing some stuff. Then this is where we use that first GeoCAD examples um, convenience function that's just gonna go ahead and like I said, fix um, the artifact of not shown data around our prime meridian. Um, so if we did not have that in there, the only difference would be that there's just a white uh, strip in the middle of our projection. Um, so then we go ahead and we create our figure object and generate some axes for it. This time, our projection is going to be the Mercator projection. Um, and so if you scroll down, you'll actually see that it has kind of populated already for us, but we are going to go ahead and add some features to our projection and then um, zoom in to a specific area on that map. And when I do say zoom in, really what that means is that we're just subsetting our data set and saying, hey, I only wanna see data points that correlate to this latitude, to that latitude, and from this longitude to the other longitude. So first thing we're gonna add here is just um, a couple of, or sorry, we're gonna go ahead and add our land feature. So we're gonna go ahead and like we did before, ax.add um, underscore feature, and then open some parentheses and do c feature dot land. Go ahead and say no face color on this one because I just wanna make sure that my data is overlaying. The only thing that I really want from this is that I'm going to have my land outlined. So face color um, is equal to none. And then put a comma, we're gonna add our edge color and set that one, I'm doing black, but you can choose a different color if you'd like. And then my line width of my personal default at 0 0.2. Then this next part is just to show that it is an, op or an option to do. Um, this would kind of, this is the same process of if you were to define proj um, or project, you know, like the proj variable. So we can just plug it into our projection as proj um, just to repeat it over and over. But we're gonna go ahead and set a states variable. Um, and so with this, it is kind of like what we did way at the beginning with the um, countries and go ahead and start out with C feature dot natural earth feature and open up a parenthesis with that. And this one is again, the category of cultural and give it a comma at the end, hit return. And then the name on this one is, it's a long one, so it's admin underscore one underscore states underscore provi providence, provinces, there we go. Um, provinces, and then underscore SHP. Finish that out and give it another comma, hit return. And for this one, we are gonna go ahead and make our scale be equal to 50M. Another comma, hit return. And then no face color on this one again, just so that way we can keep it open. Um, so go ahead and set that equal to none, comma and return. And then we're going to then give it an edge color. And for me, again, I'm going to choose black. And then our final part is our line width. And we are going to set that one equal to, sorry, I always wanna do that, 0 0.2. Alrighty, and then um, let's go ahead and hit play just to make sure that everything is looking right. Oh, it is not, so that's why we do that. Oh wait, sorry, it is right now. <laughs> or sorry, no it is not. We are missing our land feature 
And that is because we need to give it a disorder. Um, we're gonna go ahead and set this order on this one, I believe two, three, yep, there we go. Um, and so that's actually the importance of Zorder. Um, so basically what Zorder is gonna do is, um, Python likes to read in these features in order and then it just kind of layers them on each other. Um, so when I set this Zorder here, the lower the number, the lower the layer is. And so when I went and set it at three, this is pretty much going to be setting um, our land feature above the states, um, which we haven't put on there yet. We will in just a second. And then it's also going to set it above our um, data, which is down here. So that is why we want to make sure that we keep our sorters um, and we kind of know when to apply them to our projections. Um, the next thing we're going to go ahead and do is add in some coastlines. Um, so again, we're going to just do ax.coastlines. Open some parentheses. And for this part, we want to go ahead and define our resolution. Um, and as we just talked about with our resolution example, is we want to make this the same scale all the way and make it very consistent. So we're going to go ahead and say our scale is 50M. And we are good on that. And then finally, we're going to go ahead and call our states um, variable that we just defined up here. And to do that, um, we're going to do ax.add underscore feature, open our parentheses, and just type in states. So essentially what we did with our states variables, we just took all of the stuff that would normally be inside of these parentheses and we just kept it out. Um, so this would be convenient if you are making a lot of map projections and you don't want to type all of this over and over again um, in your code. So that is why we did that. And again, we're gonna hit play and make sure that everything is lined up correctly and in the right order. Um, and it looks like it is. We have our coastlines, which you can clearly see are defined on the coastline. We have our states and provinces defined. Um, and then let me just double check that we have everything. Yep, perfect. So we look good right now. Um, and then you'll see in the comment right here, this is the Virutis um, color scheme. Um, this is going to be more of obviously like a yellow to blue and we have green in the middle. However, these colors are um, very contrasting. So that is why it is part of like the best practices to use this color scheme over, for example, the rainbow color map. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and zoom into our specific area on the map. To do that, we're going to say ax.set underscore extent, open our parentheses and hit a uh, second set of parentheses right there. And for this one, um, we're going to zoom in to negative 130, which would be 130 degrees west, and then um, go to Let's see, negative 110, also west. And then the next one is going to be our, um, sorry, our latitude and coordinates. And so for this one, we're gonna do 25 north to 45 north. And from there, we put a comma and we're going to have to let um, Python know what our coordinate reference system is. So we'll type in CRS equals CCRS.plate, all right and give it a couple of parentheses right there and make sure that our front parenthesis matches our back parenthesis. And go ahead, oh, I have an extra capitalized. There we go. Um, we're gonna go, oh, and I'm missing an E at the end. There we go. <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and hit play. And there we have it. We just zoomed in essentially to the Southwest corner of the United States. Um, and that's kind of just what that looks like. This is kind of a boring map right now so I'm going to go ahead and have you guys add another feature to our um, map just to kind of make sure we get our um, practice in. So we're going to go ahead and add some lakes to this. And we're going to say ax.add, this word feature, open our parentheses, c feature dot lakes, comma, give it a face color, um, your choice as always, but I'm going to go with light gray just because it is contrasting to our color map. And because this is the last feature that we're adding, um, its natural order is going to be at the top. So we don't have to define our order here. And we go ahead and press play. And look at that, we have um, lakes on our map now. So that's pretty fun. Um, the next thing we are gonna do from here is we are going to mask a map projection. So um, from here, you'll see that we read in our data again, just 
So as we've been doing, um, use our geocat viz function to make sure that we don't have any unshown data, create our figure object. And then this is gonna be just a little bit different. Um, we are going to be using subplot for this projection. So the way that that um, subplot works, if you need a little bit of a refresher is that this stands for our rows, this is our column, and then this is the position of our projection. So right now we are looking at position one and then the projection that it is using is obviously it's defined as fraud, which is up here and it's just our CCRS plate card. So the first thing that is on there, it, we've added our coastlines and then we're gonna go ahead and just put a bunch of features on there so we can kind of see what we have um, available to us as masking features. Um, and when I say masking, it, it pretty much is what you're probably expecting. Um, the best way to describe it is when uh, Bruce Wayne puts on his mask, he becomes Batman, but I mean, we can still kind of see part of his face. The mask doesn't cover all of his face, but he's, you know, we can see what isn't covered, if that makes sense. So it, it is really just like applying a mask to something. So, you know, data that isn't masked over is still gonna show from underneath. So the first thing we're gonna add to this one is just a land feature. And as we've been doing, it's just ax.add underscore feature. Open up our parentheses, do C feature dot all caps land. And then um, just go ahead and assign your face color to this. I am going to choose pink because it's my favorite color, so why not? And then the next one we're going to add, same process, but we're going to add lakes, ax dot add underscore feature. Open our parentheses, C feature dot land, or sorry, lakes. Comma, and a face color for this one. Nope, not face roller, face color. And we're going to go ahead and set that equal to, let's go light blue, just because I feel like that will look good. And then finally, we're going to go ahead and mask out our ocean. So ax dot add underscore feature, parentheses, c feature dot ocean. And a final face color here. Let's go ahead and do just a straight blue on that one because the ocean is blue. And if you want to, you can go ahead and run this right now. Um, you don't have to. I'm gonna go ahead and just continue on and get all of these loaded in and then um, kind of go over what we have at the bottom. So for our second plot, you should note that we have AX1, whereas before we had AX. Um, this is because this is a different axis object that we are projecting to. Um, and that's just kind of part of what you have to do when you use subplots is just make your axis objects different um, when you're putting different data and things on it. So for this subplot, subplot, we are now in position two. We're able to recall proj from way up before um, because we're gonna use the same map projection. And then we obviously are adding our coastlines here. And then we, have our data being read in for this. And finally, we want to go ahead and mask out a feature. So for this one, I would like to go ahead and mask out the ocean. So as we did just above, I'm going to say ax add underscore feature, open our parentheses, c feature dot ocean, and give it a face color. I'm going to keep consistent with what I have defined above and go ahead and put in blue the face color here. Um, and for this one, you will want or you will want to put in a sorter um, just to make sure that everything comes out the way that we'd like it to. So I'm going to go ahead and make my sorter equal to one um, just because we really only have one thing that it would be conflicting with, which is our data here. So this is telling it, hey, this position is going to be above our data that we plotted. Um, and a note with Zorder is that the it is zero based. So if I wanted this to be under the data set that we're plotting here, um, I would make it zero, but we don't. So we're going to put it at position one, which will be the next one above. Um, and then again, if you would like to run it from here and go ahead and check out the plots below, that's up to you. But I'm going to continue on to our next um, plot, which is going to be on axi or AX2 which is our third position on our subplots. 
And again, we bring in Proj here for our projection, meaning plate Kari. And then we're gonna go ahead and that reads in our data and plots it on there. And we are gonna go ahead and add in a land mask. To do that, we can go AX2, oops, sorry, AX2 dot add underscore feature, open some parentheses, C feature dot land. And go ahead and set our face color. And just to keep consistency with above, mine is going to be pink and you can change your colors however you'd like, um, completely up to you. And then go ahead and put in our sorter just to make sure everything stays where I'd like it to be. And that one is gonna be set to one. And that is that. And then our fourth and final plot is just one that um, you don't have to add anything here. This is just to show what it looks like when we have no mask and it's just the data. So let's go ahead and press play. And there we have it. So this is our first um, masking example. And this was just showing our different things that we can put on our maps. Um, so we see our land in pink, our lakes in gray or light blue, and then our dart or our blue ocean. Then we have our ocean only mask. And this one, again, we see that there's no data out here, but we do have data over our land because the only thing that was masked is the ocean. Uh, so good. <laughs> And then our third one is the reverse. So we see all of our data over here in our ocean, but nothing on our land masses. So that's good as well. And we've only lost, and that means that we've only masked out our land. And then finally, this is just obviously so that you can see um, what it looks like when there's no masks. It's just our data, um, just kind of as a proof, I guess, that this is that we are indeed masking out data. So our final example here is really just putting everything together um, and kind of trying this out ourselves. So we're gonna go ahead and do a map resolution um, change on here, zooming into a specific um, data area. So latitude and longitude, and then uh, masking out specific features. So the first thing we're gonna do um, is go ahead and create some axes. Um, let me make sure that I have the correct thing here. Yeah, all right, perfect. So we are gonna go ahead and generate our axes using Cartify. Um, so as we've done, AX equals PLT dot axes, open up parentheses, and go ahead and set in a map projection argument. Um, and that is gonna be CCRS dot plate. All right, some parentheses for it, and make sure that our last parenthesis matches up with our first. And then from there, let's go ahead and add in some coastlines. So we're just adding in our features here. Um, way to do that. Here we go. It's AX dot coastlines lines. And you can go ahead and add in a scale here if you'd like to, um, but you have other opportunities to add in that scale if you don't want to right now. Um, and then the next thing we're going to add in is some state borders. So Another long um, typing second, but we're going to go ahead and say ax dot add underscore feature, open our parenthesis, and this this one is the c feature dot natural earth, and open a parenthesis for that. And because we're adding states, our category is going to be cultural. Add a comma and return. And the name on this one is admin underscore one underscore states provinces provinces underscore shp comma return. We are going to go ahead and give this a scale of 10m and then um, add in some of our color arguments here. So our face color is going to be none. So that way it stays open um, and we can see the data underneath. And then we're going to give it an edge color just so that way we can actually see that it's a feature. And mine is going to be black, but you can change that however you would like. And give it a line width of my default at 0 0.2. All right, so that'll be for our states. And then on top of that, let's go ahead and add in some country borders. So almost the same process as above, but here we go. AX.add underscore feature. 
a feature dot natural earth feature. Open our inner parentheses and our category as it is above is cultural. Cultural, there we go. And the name for this data set is, um, here we go, name is admin underscore zero underscore countries. Close that, give it a comma and return. And our scale here, as it is up here is 10 meters. So for this, we are also gonna make it 10, or sorry, not 10 meters, 10 M. We're gonna make it 10 down here as well. Go ahead and give it a comma and return. And our face color is going to be none. Comma and return. But our edge color, I'm going to go ahead and make it this the same colors above. So they're both going to be black. Um, however, just to show that there's differences um, between the two, my line width, I'm going to increase. Um, and for me, I think about 0 0.8 will do the trick to show that there's a difference between the borders of states and provinces and the borders of countries. But if you'd like to, you can change that to whatever um, size you so choose. Then um, the next thing I would like us to do is add in an ocean mask. So ax.add underscore feature, open our parentheses. And we are going to do a C feature dot ocean. And because we want to make sure the scale of this is the same as above, we're going to do ocean dot width underscore scale parentheses and put in a 10 M. And or sorry, yeah. <laughs> and then there's that. And we are going to need to define our sorter on this because this is not the last. Um, feature, we obviously have our data right here. So we want to make sure that this comes out first. So let's go ahead and give this a sorter value of five. Um, because I believe we have five features. So we will go ahead and come back to that if necessary. Um, from our sorter, let's go ahead and add in an edge color. And that one, I'm going to make it black again, not block, black, um, just for consistency and or consistency sake, I should say. And then our face color for this one, I'm gonna use gray. Feel free to use a different color if you so choose. All right. And then finally, we or not finally, we are then going to add our data overlay. Um, don't really have to do anything here. Um, you will see our transform argument to make sure that um, it knows that we are using a latitude and longitudinal coordinate reference system. There's our C map um, set as magma. You can change that and kind of experiment if you'd like to. Um, otherwise, go ahead and just leave it empty or not empty, <laughs> leave it as is. And then our final thing we're going to do um, is go ahead. Actually, before we do that, just so that way we can prove to ourselves that we will be zooming into a specific area. Let's go ahead and run this and make sure that everything's working, um, that we don't have any spelling mistakes or anything, um, and that this will go ahead and plot what we'd like it to, which is going to take a second, but <laughs> that is okay. Alrighty, perfect. So let's go ahead and go down our checklist of things that we put on there. So we can see that we have our states and then our provinces. Um, and then um, you'll see that these are a little bit thicker lines here than what are in, inside. So that means, yep, our country line widths um, set at a higher value did come through. We see our oceans masked here um, in gray, and then we have data as well. So that means that everything came through that we wanted to. Um, so we're, we're in good shape. Now, finally, let's go ahead and um, zoom in to a specific spot. Um, I'm going to do kind of just the entire United States from West Coast to East Coast, and then from the Southern border to the Northern border. If you have some coordinates you'd like to try out on your own, feel free to do so, um, or just follow along, up to you. So we have ax.set underscore extent, open up two parentheses right there. And to do the United States, we will go from negative 125 to negative 65. And that is our um, west to east coordinates. Those always come first. So 
Um, a good way to think about this is this is our x coordinate, and then what we're about to put in is our y coordinates. Uh, so the next one is 25 degrees north all the way up to 50 degrees north. And then from there, we do need to define our coordinate reference system. So CRS equals CCRS dot plate. Sorry. And give it two parentheses and make sure our last one matches up with our first one. Perfect. And let's go ahead and see if that worked. And it did. We can see um, the United States. That's what we wanted. And then obviously we can see all of the other features that we've added in. Um, along the way. Um, and then, so that's pretty much the end of the Cartify tutorial. Um, I believe we are a little bit ahead of schedule. Oh, maybe not, <laughs> we have two minutes. Um, but if there are any questions, um, you can put them in the chat. I'll be able to stick around for a bit. Um, otherwise, yeah, that's about it. Um, I will be updating the Cartify um, repository with a completely filled out version of this tutorial notebook. So that way, um, anyone that's watching this as a recording or anyone that is participating today, you can kind of come back through as a reference. Um, and then additionally, if you are looking for a couple more or really a lot more <laughs> examples that will be using Cartify and just a lot of the um, packages that we've used so far in the tutorial series, I would really recommend checking out the GeoCAD examples, Python plotting example gallery, um, which is linked right here. Um, but yeah, that's all I really have for everyone. And yeah, so I will go ahead and I can stop sharing with you for everyone too. Thank you, Michaela. Yeah. Uh, I know that early on we had some requests to revisit some of the code in the earlier cells uh, as people missed some lines and couldn't revisit them. Okay, definitely. Um, would starting in, I guess this, oh wait, I guess you can't see my screen. I stopped sharing. Let's go back to sharing for everyone then. Um, would starting in this one be a good place to go. Um, I just can't see the chat when I start sharing my screen, so I'm not sure. Let me see, let me scroll down and see. Okay, I think they had said block four, but I know the lines have changed as you've rerun some stuff, but that seems like a reasonable place to start as it's uh, where you start entering some real code. <laughs> um, yeah. So is there anything in the chat uh, and you needed us to revisit some code, can you let me know and then I will communicate to Michaela if you need us to scroll up or down. And uh, Michaela also could you upload the uh, complete version of the script to your GitHub as well so people. Yeah, yeah, that's, um, I was gonna do that once we finish with the recording and stuff. <laughs> okay, so exercise two. Um, Okay, is there a specific line, Supreet, that you would like us to explain? Um, actually, the last part of it, like, um, yeah, here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just missed this. I just want to copy this one. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I was going to say, if you need some more info on just kind of what the grid lines do or what they represent, we can definitely go over that, but. So can you do a 3D view of this using Cartopy? Um, I am not completely sure about that. Um, when, when you say like 3D or just, I'm assuming adding, um, like for example, like if I had like a mountain range here, like the Rocky Mountains, if we could just do that as like a 3D projection instead. Oh, uh, I, 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 probably like a 3D view of a globe where I can scroll around oh. the globe and see. Okay, yeah, gotcha. Um, so I think the closest one will be um, the orthographic. Let me make sure I spelled that. Yeah. And so that one, like this? 
Yes. Can okay. you spell yeah. something there? Or it's a, uh, yeah. is it interactive or it's just... Um, this one isn't. I am not sure if of a way to make it interactive. Um, I know, so a lot of people that have uh, like sort of done even like animations in here will typically just like write a loop where it kind of goes through and, and modifies that center, the center of it and basically rotate it around the globe. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's at least where I've seen this used before. Yeah, and um, it looks like Austin just said um, that Carter Pi, yeah, does not have interactive 3D plots, but um, as with a lot of Python features, there's usually someone somewhere that's kind of hacked it <laughs> to make it as close as possible. Um, but if you want to look into some other, oh, I guess I did not upload it on this version. Um, I did have a link and I'll go ahead and put this into the GitHub um, when I upload a little bit later. Um, Cardify does have a bunch of different map projections too, besides like the four that I showed you guys. So you can definitely kind of scroll through those and see if you find any that are okay. more so, uh, yeah. That actually brings up a good point. The one you said, can you add like the mountains and the stuff like that in here? Um, I believe there is a natural earth feature um, that would be listed in this link here. Um, I don't think it is included with the Carta Pi version. So yeah. like this, this little call right here, but you are able to download data sets um, and then you would essentially just be reading it in and then calling it yourself, if that makes, and like you'd just be kind of, again, like an overlay or almost like masking your data again. Carta Pi also has, um, you can use like this, the Staman terrain tiles too. Okay. So if you're interested in adding that, um, I mean, I can, I can put something in the chat with an example of, of using that Staman terrain. So if you want to add, um, for example, if you have like mountains or something like that within your domain, I um, you know the base map had had a uh, feature similar to that. Um, so you'd want to use like the Staman terrain files. And there are some examples on the Cartify documentation. Um, but I don't, I don't know if that's what you're looking for, but that might help. Yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to get more information. That's all. Thank you. Hey, can you make uh, block number five orthogra orthographic? Um, which one is, is this block five or is that further down? That's going to be further down. That's this it's one, with correct? data. Yeah, the zooming one. Um, so yeah, it's, um, it'll again just, it'll really just be with your projection. Um, and so that's what's kind of nice when you tell it with your axes, what projection, it really just takes it at face value. And so if you say, if we want to do an orthographic, orthographic, um, you just go ahead and type that in instead of the Mercator that I had in there. Oh, it might not be compatible. Well, okay, so still did it. But um, sometimes data is not happy with you doing certain projections. So it, it might be limited by which one you're doing. Um, let me make sure I didn't do anything incorrect. Oh, I believe it is actually this line that it does not like. Let's find out. Yeah, it was. Okay. Um, yeah, the, the reason it just gave me an error was because this doesn't really mesh well, I guess. Um, but that is actually a really good point from there. Um, when you do certain projections, they, there are uh, arguments that you can put in here. Um, so for example, the previous one where it was the Merc, Mer, I cannot say a Mercator projection, um, you can actually specify like what your minimum latitude or longitude is. Um, so that way it'll like extend the map a little bit more. Um, and then it, you can also like have it rotate to a certain spot. Um, and all of those things are listed on with like the documentation on the Carter Pi website. Um, but for the, you know, like the sake of just kind of making this a more basic tutorial, I didn't include that really. Um, but yeah, so you can rotate these two. It doesn't have to be just centered over our prime meridian here. But yeah, that is documented on Carter Pi's website, which I need to link. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Michaela, we had a request earlier on, um, if you feel comfortable, could you show us how to navigate the Natural Earth website so that you find data sets like admin one, states, provinces? Yes. 
So, okay. <laughs> that is such a fair question too. Um, it is definitely like a very weird website. So I'm gonna go ahead um, and just copy and paste that link. So the way that I've been doing it um, is it's kind of hacky and I don't like to show people this because of that. Um, but so what you'll, you, you do uh, with that link that I have you, um, sent for you guys, these are pretty much all of what's available from natural earth feature. Um, some of these are, like I said, already kind of look or um, loaded into Cartify. Unfortunately, I have not been able to find good documentation of what is and is not, but it does seem like really um, like countries and like map type things are in there, but you won't find like populated places. Um, with that being said, what you will end up doing if you're going to be downloading the data from this is you click on the resolution or not, the, yeah, the resolution that you want. So I'm going to say, for example, countries, I want 10. Um, and that's the same as when we specify 10M or um, when we've been doing it with uh, Cartify. And then from there, um, I actually just click this, which is the master change log. It is not the best way to do this. I assume there's a way better version. If anybody has that version, <laughs> please let me know. Um, I go ahead and go over here. And then, so, okay. So I'm gonna show you guys first and then I'll come back to what I was gonna say. So what you'll see is this is pretty much just them telling you what they've been updating, what they've been adding to um, their website, what data sets are there, maybe some changing names and things like that. Um, so you'll see right here, um, names for, these are their data set names, right? Um, this 10M matches up with the 10M that we've been using like for scale. Um, and then you might recognize the admin part that, you know, we kind of use something similar or actually we use this. We used admin, I believe zero countries. We might have used admin one. Um, and then I just matched it up with that. And the one thing that you're going to basically be doing is just copying this and then putting it into, oh, wrong place. And then I put that into, yeah, here. So that's where it says admin zero countries. Um, like I said, not the best way to do this, I'm sure. But um, I usually, it's usually kind of just like a guess and check in my opinion. So yeah, if anybody wants to dive in and say that they know a better way. Um, and the thing too, like I was kind of saying is that not everything will be available. So not all of these, um, data sets are already in the Cartify natural earth feature. Um, so if they're not, you're actually able to, so for example, if you know that admin zero countries wasn't there, um, you would just go ahead and download it right here. And that'll give you a, I guess it says that you'll have either a shapefile, a GeoDB or a TIFF format. Um, and so once that downloads, you would end up coming back over to here and I believe just reading it in as another data set um, and then overlaying them on each other. Um, and that would probably come down to using Zorder and all of that fun stuff as well. But hopefully that answers your question. Um, yeah, so that's how I do it. Not the best again, but it is an option and you can kind of just see what they have and how to call them as well. Um, some other, I was gonna say just some other ones that you might be able to look at, um, I believe. Yeah, so like when you see like these ones, like the land and ocean, um, those are ones that we were using like over and over again. So in Cartify, when we were calling um, C feature dot land and ocean, that's where these are coming from, I believe. Um, same with lakes. And then, um, yeah, you can add in islands, reefs, all kinds of fun stuff. Um, they have just a bunch of really good data sets for, for uh, map projections on this website. And then, yeah. All right. Is there anything else anyone wants to go over? Uh, I have a quick question, Mikaela. Yeah. Time. Yeah. Uh, can we add a custom model uh, domain grid lines on top of this Cartopi things? Um, 
so like not the same as like these kinds of good lines right yeah yeah i, I mean uh, for example if i take uh impasse model which has a hexagonal grid oh can you um, add something like that on top of it i'm going to say yes um however i do not know a way to do that i want to say we're actually kind of working on trying to get an example that does that with the geocat library um but we have not yet so that's kind of that one's on our plate um i think actually let me just double check this because i think john klein might have put something in there let's see and this is also our github repo so if anybody you know gets really excited about geocat examples and wants to add things um there is this is where you can kind of go um so i th think based on this john did take a stab at it um and this is just the code that he was using. So it does, is this kind of what you're looking for? Like, Yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so there's that. Um, if you would like to take a look at that, that's, I guess, the best place I would recommend looking. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's on our list of things to do right now, but we just haven't gotten around to it yet. Um, so yeah, <laughs> it is possible, I guess I should say. Awesome, thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Uh, please, I'm wondering if uh, it's possible to create um, a topographic map using the Catopy. Um, sorry, which? Uh, showing, showing the elevations. Oh, like uh, an elevation map using Catopy. I let me double check. Oh, of course, of course, it's when I don't have the full link. Let me just double check. I don't have it somewhere else. I am not completely sure if we can, but I feel like I have seen um, um, So these are all of the projection types that we have. I am not completely sure if they do have a topographic yet, but I have seen something similar to it. I can't remember if it might just be a matplotlib instead. Um, because that's also how people have kind of done a pseudo 3D type projection as well as by having just really good topography lines going. But um, let's see. Yeah, I, nope. I don't, I don't want to say that they don't yet. Um, I think it's a possibility. Let me just, let me just do a quick Google. Um, Python. Sorry, this is, this is probably not the best. I could have sworn that we had something. Okay. Okay, so now I know. Okay, um, I will. So based on just kind of what I'm seeing, I think what people have done in the past is that they will use. It looks like they get a data set that will have um, basically those topography lines on them, and then to a contour F map. So, kind of to put that in scope. So if these were, like the data. Um, I don't know if I'm going to explain this very well, but here we go. Um, so if you were to have a data set that tells you those topography data points, essentially, um, you could just, it. this is what it looks like they're doing. Um, you could run it through the contour F and then it will end up um, spitting out something that looks like this. And then I believe you would just end up having to define, um, you might just do a contour map instead. And it, it pretty much you just are running um, your data set through, this will end up being matplotlib, um, and then overlaying it onto your projection. So there is a way <laughs> to answer your question. Um, it's just kind of more of like a roundabout way. So you'll just need to have a data set that tells where those um, contour lines are gonna be. And then you would overlay them 
pretty much it has out how we did it in the examples, if that makes sense. Yes, uh, thank okay. you. Cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And is there any other questions from anyone? Um, is it possible to ask a question at the oh, yeah. sort of a general level? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's I'm a little confused as to where Cartopy ends and Matplotlib begins and where the X-ray stuff is coming in here. And yeah. um, so maybe a high level summary of how those interact here. Yeah. Um, so to start just with the X-ray, just because it's really not, it's not used that much. Um, the places that we're really just using x-ray is really just to bring or just to open our data set um, and that's just because we're using net cdf files and it's you know a bit it's one of two ways that you can open a net cdf file um, so that's really just the only place that you're using x-ray in this whole tutorial so uh, don't worry too much about that one um, but then uh, your question about the matplotlib and cartify interactions it's it's very interactive <laughs> they are very uh just kind of mesh together. Um, so for example, when we're making our axes here, we call matplotlib. But then right here, ooh, there we go. <laughs> right here, we're actually letting it know, hey, we're actually going to bring in Cartify. So right here, they're communicating with each other already. Um, and so that's, I mean, that's the first and foremost, the place that they're interacting. For the most part after that, it's, it's pretty much just meshed together the rest of the way. Um, and the, I think really the reason why is that matplotlib is how you were able to do data plotting um, for, I don't want to say that so definitively, but pretty much um, you are using matplotlib all the time. So when we are using Cartify and we're saying, you know, let's add this feature, I guess the best way to think about it is we're going to be adding essentially a data set to matplotlib and that data set is land. And then it goes on to our matplotlib projection, or not projection, but um, figure. And that's this is essentially just a data set on that. Um, and so what's even kind of more funny to do, oh, I shouldn't say funny, but um, kind of where it even intermingles again is right here with our grid liner. Um, we again see that, so these grid lines, if we actually scroll back to the top, um, they are part of, I believe, they should be part of matplotlib um, in general. And then when we come down here and we have M ticker, that's matplotlib again. Um, so they are pretty much just like hand in hand this entire time. Um, I don't know if there's necessarily like any place that like they're super separate from each other, but yeah. So they, Cartify is creating objects that you're passing yeah, to- Yeah, pretty much. Referencing in, in, in the matplotlib calls. But when you actually do the contour plot, the contouring, the, the thing that's creating the contours, the filled contours, is is matplotlib. <laughs> um, I believe so. Either plot dot contour f, but that's a, a, a method for t, which is t is a yeah. I was lost at this point because of some technical issues, so I didn't quite follow where t came from. Oh yeah, um, so t is actually just our data oh. set um, that we were using. So um, it's, a, it's an X-ray object. Yeah, um, and then it pretty much just interacts here um, because it would be T and then it, it goes ahead and plots it. And then obviously this is kind of our sub one, which is this is a filled contour plot, which is why it comes out with our colors here. Um, but that's a plotting, fun that's a plotting uh, method within X-Array. Um, I believe, is Austin, sorry, is Austin still on the call right now? He doesn't say, I know that he, yeah. Um, do you have a better <laughs> explanation for um, kind of where the X-ray part of our T is with matplotlib? Because I know that you're, you're a little bit more versed in X-ray than I am. So I don't want to give anybody the wrong answer with that. In other words, if I didn't have Cartify, if I didn't have this whole thing set up, I could still do these kind of, these kind of plots. Um, I'm just trying to sort of pick it up, pick it apart a little bit so I understand what's coming from where. Yeah. Um, and basically, what documentation to go to if I have questions. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
Uh, so I, I can say that the uh, the data set dot plot functionality it comes from. The... I'm sorry, my mic wasn't on. I was answering the question, and I was like wondering why I couldn't be heard. I can answer it. I just, just my mic is off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, take uh, it. So. Um, X-Array is pretty smart about looking at your data shape and figuring out what a good default plot is, but you can also tell it to do something different. Mm -hmm. um, the X-Array plot method, or I guess plot object, um, wraps matplotlib and does a lot of, of things. It's, oh, it's a lesson in and of itself, but generally you can tell it to do whatever you want it to do and it will. Um, what we're doing here is plots being called and your contour F is the type of plot being told to be presented. You pass in these transforms and levels and things and um, X-Array has some pretty smart algorithmic features that can take whatever you give it and turn it into something that's like legible and pretty nice. Um, it's not gonna be perfect every time, but it's like 99% of the way there most of the time. Well, I, it, as a matter of practice, for me, it would be if contour F, if I wanted to learn all the options there, I would be looking in matplotlib contour F for that, right? Yeah. I would not guarantee that, honestly. I, was gonna say, okay. I, wonder, I, I would make sure you have an IDE open and then like shift click that. Yeah. Um, I believe, no, I think it's um, matplotlib because that's what's coming up here. Okay. Yeah. I would say that's part of that's part of matplotlib. Is okay. Content. It's yeah. being passed to well, the just X plot object which may do interesting things and have uh useful defaults or ways of figuring out useful defaults so it will behave differently than the contour f from um, matplotlib but it won't have but the if you if you treat it like a matplotlib contour f object it'll still work Okay, that's actually sort of yeah I kind of wanted this high level view of where these how these pieces all fit together thank you very much yeah, so the, the plot from X-Ray um, is matplotlib on the back end, but it will have functions that will create good automatic values. Um, and it will have good default color maps and things that, and it will even produce labels based off of your dimensions and coordinate systems. It's great. Like you tell it to plot something with no arguments. If you just did t.plot no arguments, you would actually get a readable plot like with coordinate systems, with labels, with axis titles, everything. So it does a whole lot more than just the matplotlib contour F would do. It actually generates a full on plot. Okay. I think but in, pra in practice, when you want to learn about all the possible options that you could put to you this- You would go to matplotlib's repo because it will be matplotlib in the back end. Okay. Yeah. Um, and that's actually kind of a good point too, is that was something I kind of had to learn with doing Cartify's um, this part, or not really that part, but this part um, is bringing in, so like when I, let's, let's do this better. So you can actually set your extents within contour F if you want to, um, but we obviously did it, not on this one, but on the next one. And we're able to set, you know, hey, where's where's our data gonna be? Where, you know, what are we focused on? Um, and that's, what's kind of cool about it is that it, it already reads in your latitude and longitude data for you. So, or actually, yeah, so that's actually, this is a great example. Um, we did not tell it to zoom into the Strait of Gibraltar at, um, at any point during this. Um, the data set only has data that encompasses this. And so it's able to just really sit there and be like, oh yeah, I'm, I have no other data for you. So I'm gonna just go ahead and zoom into where my data set is valid. So I think that that's actually kind of a really cool thing. The interactions between all three of them, I guess, really, um, and how they work. And then obviously the flip side is this one where we have data for pretty much every inch of the earth. So it, it defaults to being a zero. That one defaulted to zero, zero, lat lawn. You're looking at the ocean just off the coast of Africa. Yeah, and I was like, this one's just on its default. At so. the equator on the Greenwich Meridian. Yeah, it's all fun. <laughs> but it's, definitely, it's, it's interesting how, um, I'm gonna just call it smart, <laughs> just how smart these functions are and how they kind of cooperate without um, your input even um, as well. So yeah, but cool. Um, does anybody else have any questions? Um, we're all Thank you, Michaela. 
definitely. I know we don't have many people left in the call, uh, but many people have already flooded the chat with uh, gratitude. And we will see you in about two weeks in May to talk about Git and GitHub a little bit more advanced than what you've covered so far. So what to do like when you encounter Git conflicts and things like that. Okay, thank you everybody. Thanks.